First on More 4, a one-man stand-up history show, a personal blend of crude comedy and refined polemic, Robert Newman's unique view of a hundred years of oil. So I did a 26-city tour of the United States last year, and it was a very interesting time to be over there. I was in North Carolina, reading the papers in the backyard with the guy who lived next door to where I was staying. It was the day that news first broke from Iraq of this united Sunni and Shia joint uprising against the U.S.-led occupation. Same day, there was news of an African Union declaration condemning U.S. foreign policy. And the guy next door said to me, I'll tell you this much about the United States, we are sure bringing about world unity. Because the one thing unites the entire planet, hatred of us. It's like y'all became one big nation called the rest of the world. And I said to him, well, actually, we did. In fact, we've even got our own flag. He went, oh, yeah? What is it? I said, same as yours, but on fire. <laughs> I was skip diving in Kentish town and in this skip I discovered a book called Marching to the Drums from the Kabul massacre to the siege of Mafeking and it was a fairly gung-ho military history full of stirring tales of colonial daring do in the British Empire's overseas campaigns from 1860 to 1902 so you've got a chapter on Gordon of Khartoum, Omdurman, Charge the Light Brigade and at the top of each little chapter there was this little introductory standalone paragraph in bold just explaining what the British Army happened to be doing in Afghanistan, Egypt, Sudan. And because of the people who read gung-ho military histories like Marching to the Drums are really only interested in one thing, weapons, weapons and maybe tactics but on the whole weapons, <laughs> there was a refreshing honesty candor and lack of hypocrisy about this little standalone introductory paragraph. With its opening in 1869, the Suez Canal became the principal waterway to Britain's most valuable overseas possession, India. It was therefore imperative for the British Army to control all traffic through the Suez Canal, which meant, first of all, crushing the indigenous independence movements of Egypt and the Sudan. <laughs> now, the Webley Automatic Gatling Gun was able to fire 500 rounds a minute. This proved more than a match for the scimitar swords and wicker breastplates of the Mahdi Army. <laughs> and this bull stating of the geopolitical facts of life strikes the modern reader with the force of revelation. For there is, in our own time, an absolute taboo among the corporate news media and the political class against mentioning anything to do with the strategic and economic reasons for war. As witness, just over a year ago, I'm listening to the Today program on Radio 4, and there was this little phrase they kept repeating on the half hour, every half hour. The G8 has today endorsed an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East. The G8 has today endorsed an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East. The level of naivety necessary 
before you can talk about an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East, you will not find that level of naivety anywhere outside of 1970s porno films. <laughs> Gee, mister, you mean the time machine only works if I take off all my clothes? The G8 has today endorsed an American plan to bring democracy to the Middle East. And which country were they discussing that particular morning? Why, Iran, of course! Which until 1953 was a secular democracy.